Hey guys, Deanne Taylor here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an in-app notification for when an email has been opened by a prospect or a customer, but I'm actually going to show you how to do that by using a tool in the XRM toolbox designed by Ivan Frico. I'm hoping that I'm not butchering his name, but anyways, let's go ahead and take a look. So let me first show you that functionality and how that works. So I'm going to send an email here to Angel and I'm going to put in a subject line here, right? He visited our website and now we're reaching out to him. Now, the important part here is that you're actually following the recipient activity. And what that means is that when Angel actually opens this email, that will actually be data that's been written back to Dataverse, to Dynamics 365. So when that happens, I can actually use a Power Automate flow to create that in-app notification inside of Dynamics 365. So I'm going to go ahead and send that email message. As you can see, it's processing right now. What's going to happen then is he's going to receive that message. He's going to open that message. And again, that data is going to be written back to Dataverse and that will trigger my flow, my Power Automate flow. So you're going to see that. So let's just give it a second here. We can just, you know, navigate through Dynamics, right? We're just doing our work. We're just working on our accounts, etc. And here you go. For whatever reason, I actually got two email notifications or two notifications saying that the email was opened. So here you can see that's the email I just sent and I can even visit that email message as well, right? I can click on that and then I can respond to that. I can see how often this email message was opened, etc. So again, the way that this works, I'm actually going to switch over now to Power Automate and I'm just waiting for Power Automate to load. Let me zoom in a little bit here. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new flow and this is going to be an automated cloud flow. I don't like this page. So I'm just going to go skip because I like those larger pages where I can actually see everything because I have more screen real estate. But what I'm going to do here is this is obviously going to be triggered when a row is added, modified or deleted. So I'm going to look here for Microsoft Dataverse. And then this is what we're looking for when a row is added, modified or deleted. So as I said earlier, when that email is opened, there's actually an update which happens in the email messages. So I want to look for the email messages table. So email messages, here we go. And then my trigger is going to be on modified and my scope. This really depends, right? However you want to set this, I'm actually going to set this for organization, but then we also have uh, some advanced options here as well. Now, when that email message is opened, like I said earlier, you're going to have some data that's going to be written back into that table. In this case, the email messages table, because there is an open count field there in the email messages table. And we're going to say, Hey, if that open count is greater than zero, that's actually when we want this to be triggered right now. I'm going to pull up here XRM toolbox because you can do things like that in XRM toolbox. And I'm going to show you exactly how to filter those rows, right? And getting that O data style of a filter. And this is XRM toolbox. I'm sure most of you guys have heard of it. This was fathered by the amazing Scott Darrow. If you have not used XRM toolbox and any of those tools in there, uh, there's so many people from the community that actually added tools to this and it, you can do some amazing stuff with this. But what I'm going to do to get that O data 
statement or whatever you want to call that filter. I'm going to use the Fetch XML Builder, which is also an amazing tool. And what we're going to do here is I'm already connected to my environment, but what I'm going to do here is I'm actually first, I'm going to add, it says here entity, right? So that's my table and the entity table is email. I think it's just email. So what you can do then is add that filter, right? And we said that we want that open count. So I'm going to look for the open counts. Let me see here. And you can see that these are system names, right? But that shouldn't be a problem. So open counts equals or basically is greater than, right? Is zero. Or you can say equal than equal to one, right? Because you just want a notification for the first open. I'm just going to do this here. And then what you can do here is you can view, you can see that here, your power automate parameters. So when I click on this and this pops up in my other screen here, so let me pull it over, right? My filter query is now showing it's the open counts and then you see greater than zero. So I'm going to click on that and then it copies that query. And then I'm going to go back here to power automate and I'm going to paste that into that filter rows for O data. That's all you have to do. And, and you can use this right for other statements as well. So that's all I have to do here. My next step is now building that notification that we saw earlier. So the notifications are actually records. It's actually a table inside of Dynamics 365. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a row that's for that notification. So I'm going to click here on Microsoft Dataverse and I'm going to add a new row. And the table that you're looking for is notifications. And depending on what you have installed there, we see here, you might have, as you can see here, two notifications and I never know which one is right. So usually what I do, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Let me try that again notifications let me try the first one and you can see here now that it's expanded what do I have on here I have icon type data body so this is actually the correct one so I'm good with this but now we need to fill this out right what's the body of the notification all that kind of stuff this is again where we're going to look at the XRM toolbox so I'm going to go back here I'm going to go back to my start page and I, I'm going to open this in-app notification builder, which was built by Ivan Flico. Again, I hope I'm not butchering your name, but this is an amazing tool. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. I'm not going to update it because it's working fine the way it is. And then this is where you can build your notification. You can kind of see on the side here that you get a preview window. So you can kind of see what your notification looks like. You can enter the title. You can enter a body. You can see that you can even put links in here as well. Images. How long should this notification last? When should it expire? And then you can also pick an icon, but I'm just going to give it a second here while this loads. All right, so here we go. So I can put in my title and I wanted to say your email was opened and then we want to put the body in there. So I'm going to say your email has opened, but then I want to put the subject of the email in here as well. So what you can do here is just put a placeholder in here. So I'm going to do subject. That's the placeholder for the dynamic content in Power Automate. And then what I'm going to do here as well is you can actually put a link in there as well. So I'll show you that in a second, but we want this to be, or you can say timed or hidden. I'm going to say times. And this is really how long should this notification be available? So I'm going to say this is going to be available in the database. I don't know, maybe for like 30 minutes, right? So people can go back and look at their notifications and it's still going to be there. So that's how easy that is. Then the next thing you can do here is you can actually add an action. So you can put some text in here, um, open email here, right? So this is going to be the link where people can access that email from. I'm going to say this is going to be 
a new window and you can say URL, a record, right? All of those different things. I'm going to say a URL because what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab part of that URL from Dynamics and then I'm going to put the unique ID at the end. So let me go ahead and do that. And here you can see that email message, right? So I'm going to grab the entire thing except for this last piece, which is the email ID. So I'm going to grab all of this and now I'm going to go back to the XML toolbox here. And this is my URL that I'm going to put in there. So you can see here email ID is, and then I can say email, or I can just say, this is going to be that unique ID. I'm going to hit create here. And that's what it's going to look like. So people can click on that and that will take them to that email message, right? That was just open. Now, another thing that's kind of nice is that you can change those icons in there as well. So there are some icons that come with this, right? I can do success. You can see the check mark, failure, etc. But you can also use any of the icons that are part of Dynamics 365. So I'm going to click here on custom and these are some of the icons that are already in there. You can also upload your own web resource. You can see we have CVGs, we have PNGs, etc. Let me see if we have any email ones. We should. Let me just search here a little bit until we get to E from email. Let me see. Email. So email icon, that's the one I used. <clears throat> and then we can go email link. Oh, that's kind of cool too, right? So once you're done with designing that code, you can test this. I can just go ahead and click test and then I can send it to somebody if I wanted to. So let me just go ahead and see if I can find myself. Here we go. I'm going to test this. That's how you can kind of see what it looks like in your environment. And if you're done with that, you can actually get the code. And again, right, Power Automate. So we're going to be able to use this. So now if we're going to go back to Dynamics, let me go ahead and do a big switch again. And we're actually not going back to Dynamics. We were in the middle of building a Power Automate flow. So we're going to go back there. You can see that we have similar fields, right? Title, body, data, expiry, icon, icon type etc. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this information into that flow. So I'm going to do for body, I'm going to grab this. Your email was open. So let me go back here to Power Automate flow. And I'm going to go ahead and put that here in the body. I'm also going to your email was opened, explanation point. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to copy and paste, right? I'm going to grab this. This is the data section. I'm going to go back here to Power Automate, put it here in the data section, expiry seconds, right? Again, if we go back here to the XRM toolbox, 1800, you can put an owner in here, but let's just go ahead and go back to Power Automate, do 1800 seconds there. 1800 seconds the icon type was custom there we go let's see if there's anything else we need to put in there you can put an owner in here right it already tells you system users so we can do that as well if it's for a particular person let's go back here <clears throat> and we're going to say the owner oops the owner this guy right is going to be Oops, that's not what I wanted to do here. That is the owner. It's the value. So it's going to be assigned to the owner. We had some other things in here as well, right? We wanted to put the subject of that email in there. So I'm going to say subject. There we go. And then we also had, right, we needed to put the unique ID of that email message. So I'm going to say email. Let's see here. Where is the unique ID email message? Here it is, unique identifier of the email activity. 
So we're going to put that at the end of the URL. And then we can just go ahead and save that. And that is it. You have completed your notification in Power Automate Flow. So I'm going to say email notification in Dynamics 365 on open. And here we can see that email notification that we just created by Power Automate Flow. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss a video again. Thanks for watching.